One of the most important things for the looks of a cafe racer is getting the rear part of the seat pan to flow into the rear cowl section. When I approached this problem, I did a lot of research into how other people have done the seats for their cafe racer, and nothing really stuck with me. I did have a revelation, and that was that I can't app design a Honda engineer from the 80s. As much as I'd like to have that ability, I don't. Most people don't. But to my point, the factory seat pan was kind of good for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it used a simple tongue at the front to mount up like most motorcycle seats do, so that cut down on the hardware. Number two, it already had a shape at the front that flowed from the tank, and that shape covered up the mounting bolts for the tank nice and cleanly, which I definitely liked. And number three, it already had some rubber bumpers on the bottom for some vibration dampening, and it gave the pan some clearance for some leather to wrap around the bottom. But I didn't like the huge factory pillion section rear part of the seat. I didn't like that it had mounting hardware all the way back near the pillion seat, so I thought to myself, I like the front, but I don't like the back. I'll cut the rear pan off, keep all the good features on the front, and remake the rear pan on my own. Only problem was, the pan was stamped. And it has a little bit of a weird step shape in the middle here because of that stamping. But with some clever planning and a little bit of focus, I bet I could get a piece of sheet metal to that shape with nothing but the offset dies and the bead roller. I started by rolling a ton of test pieces to try to match the shape of that factory pan. I needed to find the right setup to match the height of each step. I needed to find the angle that it steps down at. And of course, I wanted to keep the lows and the highs parallel to match this shape perfectly. Now, once I had the offset dies dialed in, the next challenge was how to transition to this bend at the rear of the pan here. Now, this bend, not something structural, just something I did quick in the electro brake, and it doesn't need too much strength because the rear of the pan will also be supported by the cowl behind it. Now, my plan to go from this stamp shape at the front here to flat again so I can get this bend right here was to make some horizontal reference lines and feather each bead roll out evenly as we progressed at a standard rate. Now, as you can see, that worked just great. And if you go slow, keep everything consistent, you could feather out your beads back to flat. Now, counting your turns here and being super consistent is very important here. I dialed in about two and a half, three turns after we touched the material, and I had three inches of bead to travel across, right? So some simple math states that if I pull out a turn on the bead roller for each inch of travel, I'll move back to flat by the end of those three inches of travel. Pretty simple. Now, once we had that new rear section of the pan bead rolled, the shape matched perfectly to the stamping on the factory seat. All I had to do was weld it together, but I wanted to be very careful, only have one of these factory seat pans, did not want to blow through, wanted to make a nice structural weld here to support my weight, but once we had that done, easy peasy. I was able to Frankenstein a seat pan that is going to fit my needs. A couple of other things I did to this seat pan here, just some small quality of life stuff. Obviously, this thing needed to mount out, so I drilled a couple holes in the frame and I drilled a couple holes in the seat pan, welded these studs in here so this will lock into place. And of course, we have that tongue at the front. At the rear here, two more rubber bumpers, same as the ones that were from the factory in the front. Liked what they were doing with those. Grabbed two more, drilled some holes, put those in. This will help support my weight at the back of the seat and make sure that everything is nice and straight once this thing is bolted down to the bike. Now, other than that, there are a couple things I have yet to do. Number one, I wanna roll a couple beads in the back of this pan here, help strengthen it up a little bit. And I also need to trim it to size. Once I know what I'm gonna do for upholstery, I'll get some samples, lay that over there, and trim this to size so that it flows perfectly into the rear cow. After that, a little bit of a media blast, coat of paint, and this thing will be ready to go to the upholstery shop. Press the button to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're giving away a MIG 180 Weller at 500,000 subscribers. Also, make sure you check out our channel as well. We post tons of great how-to content over there you're definitely going to want to see. We'll have the bead roller link below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm JD. Make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.